Welcome back to a short lecture on the Higher Education Series. The title of our lecture is Introduction to the Research Process. The point of this lecture is to describe the basic steps of the research process. We will also try to define what research is, as well as try to give a tangible example on how the research process can apply even in everyday tasks. There are a lot of definitions for research. These include a scientific study to seek hidden knowledge, scientific study to answer a question, a scientific study of causes and effects, a scientific attempt toward new discoveries, a scientific method of inquiry, a logical attempt to find questions to problems, systematic approach to a problem, a scientific attempt to discover the truth. A lot of scientific stuff in this particular definition. The statistical concept of research states that research is a systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data in order to solve a particular question. Research can be classified as basic and applied research. Basic research means that it is necessary to generate new knowledge and technologies, while applied research is necessary to identify priority problems and to design and evaluate policies and programs, for instance, to optimize healthcare delivery. Why do we need to do research? Research provides answers to unknown and important questions. It stimulates learning and acquisition of new knowledge, develops a higher level of professional competence in the relevant field, and for example, in the medical field, directly affects patient care and health policies. Research-based knowledge is usually authentic and verifiable. Again, research-based knowledge is usually authentic and verifiable. These are very important in today's era of fake and clickbait news. What is the research process? The research process is a step-by-step -step guide on what a researcher does in creating a research output. It begins with the conception of the problem that needs researching and culminates in the utilization of the product of the research endeavor. Most sources focus on the research process as something that you need to do whenever you need to write a thesis or submit a work report. But in reality, I like to think of it as a, as a cognitive exercise that we do all day, every day, whenever we try to learn something new or make an informed decision. This can be as important as making a life-changing choice of selecting your college degree or as trivial as arguing with your partner on which Avengers movie is the worst. Formally though, I would like to equate the research process with a more common and easily recognizable term, the scientific method. Depending on your starting point and goals, the research process can be a full-on doppelganger for or just a subset of the scientific method. Different references would enumerate the process using different terminologies and even differing number of steps, with some sources citing as few as five steps, or some can even reach more than a dozen. For the purposes of this discussion, though, let's discuss the 11-step process. To enumerate the 11 steps, we have the following. Identifying the research question. Conducting a review of related literature, defining the objectives, formulate the hypothesis and, def and define the study variables, construct the study design, design the tools for data collection, collect the data, process the data, analyze the data, write the research report, and disseminate and utilize the result. At this point, we're going to go deep into each of the steps that we've enumerated earlier, and to better illustrate each step, We'll try to give ourselves a simple research topic to pursue. Which Avengers movie is the worst? Step 1. Identify the research question. The guide questions for step 1 would include What is the research all about? This should be answered by topic selection and general statement of the problem. Another question that you may ask would be Why should I do research on that topic? And this will be answered by the rationale or the significance and the research background. For our research question, the research is all about wanting to know which Avengers movie is the worst. And my justification for doing this particular topic? Very simple. Step 2. Conduct a review of related literature. What is known and unknown about the topic? We have to ask that question. We have to do our preliminary and secondary literature search. Another question 
would be how strong or accurate are the literature available and being bombarded to me. This will involve critical review of each and every literature that you're going to come across with. For our sample study, how many Avengers movies were there and what are the plots? In terms of accuracy and validity of the available literature, which sources do I consider accurate and valid, which are mm, not so much? Step 3. Define the objectives. What about the topic do I really care about? This can be answered through your research question and your general objective. The next question would be what things should I know in order to answer the research question? And that can be answered by your specific objectives. For our study, you have to define what the worst mean. You should also know how to break down the meaning of the term the worst. Is it related to box office earnings, ratings by critics or viewers, or just basic plot consistency? Step 4. Formulate the hypothesis and define the study variables. What would the research prove or disprove? This is where all those research terms, null and alternative hypotheses, come into play. Defining them early on can help clarify what exactly are the possibilities you are expecting to learn at the end of the research. Another question is, what should I measure to prove or disprove my hypotheses? We have to define our dependent and independent variables clearly. We should construct conceptual but more importantly operational definitions for all the variables that we will be collecting and make sure that getting values for your variables will eventually answer your hypothesis. Our sample hypothesis can be is Age of Ultron worse than the Avengers and how about Infinity Wars? We should also learn how to define our variables. Do lesser earnings equal bad? Does lazy storytelling equal worse? Number five, construct the research design. What is the best plan of attack? This will involve creating your study methodology. And this includes everything from data analysis, processing, ethical considerations, financial considerations, Gantt charts, tasking, and all of those things. Another question would be, who are my respondents and how do I select them? This will involve sampling, selection criteria, and even recruitment strategy is very, very important. In our study, we may ask our colleagues, our friends, we may do surveys, we may read the comment section. These are different plans of attack, and we have to define which is best. Say we decided to just ask our friends about what their opinions are regarding the Marvel movies. The next question is, how do we get them to answer our questions? Step 6. Design the tools for data collection. What tools should I use to get responses from my respondents? This would involve data collection tool design. Should you do face-to-face -face surveys? Should you do online polls? Should you go and observe them directly? So these are the questions that you need to answer at this stage. How do I make sure that my tools are good enough? It's not enough to just grab any pre-made survey that is lying around and to use that for your particular research. You have to make sure that that data collection tool has been pre-tested, the questions are valid, it is cost-effective, you can train your data collectors using that particular tool. Off materials for data collection is something that you have to think about. For our study, let's say we decide to post our questions on social media. So which social media message would get the best response rate? Would our respondents enjoy a 97-item Facebook survey? Step 7. Collect the data. What preparations do I need? You have to think about provision of proper in informed consent, asking for permissions to actually conduct our research, and even training our data collectors. How do we efficiently and accurately collect data? This step is a methodology within a particular methodology. You have to detail in this step the recruitment process, the physical, political, and safety limitations of your research and data collection, and even what your plans are if people don't want to respond to you. For our research, an example of an informed consent would be to tell them what this research is really all about. 
In our data collection methodology for our research, probably gathering our friends in one setting would be the most effective way. Yeah, probably. Step eight, process the data. How do we keep the data and prepare them for analysis? The step involves data management, data encoding, even thinking about security issues and protecting data, and even the completeness of data. Which data should I use and quote unquote not use? This involves the concept of data cleaning and data preparation. For our sample research, we can actually use Microsoft Excel, but probably Notepad will do. And if we take a look at our data, probably some of the answers there have typographical errors or grammatical errors or even inconsistent answers, probably best not to use them in your analysis. Step nine, analyze the data. In this step, we think about how should we analyze our data to answer our research question and objectives. You have to be smart about planning for data analysis. You have to think about descriptive versus inferential statistics and which data analysis methods are not really necessary to accomplish our objectives. What tools should we use to analyze our data? This is where we decide which data analysis software or equipment to use. Do we use OpenEPI? Do we use Stata, SPSS? These are the questions that we need to answer at this stage in our process. For our example, probably a backward stepwise logistic regression would be overkill. And probably my calculator will do the job right. Step 10. Write the research report. So at this point, we have to look at our findings and what these findings mean. We write up the results and discussion and we try to make our conclusion. The next question is how do we organize our data for eventual publication? This will be governed by the principles of proper data visualization. At this point, it is also very prudent to know that format is very important because it limits page numbers, citations, and reference styles. Certain journals, certain people, certain news outlets will have their own different requirements, and it's best to know that early on, we know what their proper format is so that we won't need to rewrite and rewrite our report. Now, based on my findings, Infinity Wars earned almost $2.8 billion. That's an example of a result. What it means, though, is very much different. Organizing the data in this particular tedious exercise, probably graphs will do, probably summaries. We'll see. Step 11, disseminate and utilize the result. At this stage, we have to ask, to whom should we communicate the findings? We have to know our target audience. Even at the onset, it should be clear whether you want your findings broadcasted to everyone who's who is willing to listen, or to just a few experts who might use your data in policymaking, for example. This will set a tone on how you would write your conclusions. How do we communicate our findings? Traditionally, this can be through publications, meetings, symposia, policy briefs, etc. But more recently, this can be through online activities such as making long YouTube videos, or short Twitter posts, or even spamming multiple Viber groups. To share, there is an entire field of study on how to properly communicate research findings called, oddly enough, research communication. There's also a potentially controversial field called data storytelling, and this deals exclusively on how data should be structured, interpreted, and presented to different audiences. Quite an interesting field, if I say so myself. This step is often underappreciated and taken for granted, and even in research books, data dissemination is often overlooked as most research process steps and in the writing of the manuscript. But if you recall the two categories of research that we talked about earlier, most people nowadays focus on applied research and without dissemination and utilization plans, your study cannot be called applied. Lastly, if you recall the latest news stories and social media posts by let's say politicians or laypersons or comedians, you may be able to tell that some of them have little to no grasp on how to present research findings to their colleagues, to the press, or worse, to the public. For our study, you have to look back. Who is this research for again? Why am I doing this? And I guess our plan of communication is through a safe space. 
let's recap everything that we've talked about. We've quickly defined what research is and also defined the two broad categories of research. We've also enumerated the steps in the research process. We've also discussed the important considerations of each step in the research process and the important questions that we need to ask ourselves regarding that particular step in the research process. And lastly, we've loosely tried to use the research process approach to address a pretty petty and self-serving problem. And as for the Avengers conundrum, I therefore conclude with 95% confidence and 80% power that Avengers Endgame is the worst Avengers movie. And it has nothing to do with the box office revenue or viewer ratings, but rather with a combination of absurd probabilities and lazy time travel tropes. That's the whole point. And yes, even just for this lecture, I actually did my research. Thank you for watching. If you learned something, feel free to share this video to someone who might find it useful. And don't stop learning.